Shortcuts is an app I use every single day and it seriously helps my workflow. For those that don't know, Shortcuts are automation utilities you can build on your iPhone, iPad, and now the Mac in macOS Monterey. You can basically write your own mini apps using blocks of actions. In this video, I'm going to cover shortcuts I use every single day, and I will put links to where you can download them in the description below, but I highly recommend watching the video in its entirety so you know how to set those shortcuts up. My thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. So the first shortcut I want to talk about is one I run a ton throughout the day, and this is my new task shortcut. This is for getting tasks into things in a really convenient way. I can run this from a bunch of different places like Spotlight or from the dock or all sorts of different places I can run this from. Uh, when I run it though, what it does is it asks for a new task, but we can enter more than one task. It isn't limited. So what we could do is we could say, take out trash, and then we can do a line break and do get mail. And what this is going to do is it's going to break each one of these lines up into a separate task. So it enters them as multiple tasks. This way, if you have um, things you want to put into your task manager, more than one thing that you want to put into your task manager, you can do that really easily without having to run the shortcut or enter one task at a time when in your task manager. So I'm going to hit done here. It's going to run and it adds those two tasks. Now this uses the things action, but you can easily swap this out for any other task management action. Let's just go into things here and I will show you uh, get mail and take out trash. I'm busted right here. This is my second take. I, I messed it up the first time. So the next shortcut I want to show is my bag checklist. I got this idea from the Automators podcast and it's been really handy. If you're somebody that travels a lot or doesn't travel a lot, uh, but you want to have a checklist for when you are packing to make sure you have everything that you could possibly need, this is really handy. This uses a dictionary action to break all the different things that I could want to take with me into different categories. So things like my iPad gear, camera gear, switch, maybe overnight travel. It uses this this dictionary action right here to help me kind of define this stuff. So you could come in here and you could be like, okay, so this is all the camera gear I may want to bring with me. But what if I want to bring a different lens or something? You could come in here and add a text right here and we could say 35 millimeter lens. So that way we can add something else to this category in camera. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But what if you don't want to use these categories? What well, you can delete these categories if you want, and then you can hit this plus button right here, select array, and you can pick a new category. Um, we're gonna say this is for the kids. And uh, you're gonna go ahead and hit the zero items, and then you're gonna hit this plus button right here and select text. And then you're gonna put in something that the kids need, um, snacks. Uh, then you can go ahead and hit another item if you want. And let's say kids are going to want, um, Game Boy. I know Game Boys aren't popular anymore, but that's what I used to have when I was a kid. So I want to put Game Boy and then we're going to hit done. So now you have another category in here that's for the kids and then I'll have snacks. So when we run this right here, we can select which categories we want to pack. So we'll say camera for the kids and overnight travel. And then we're gonna hit done. And then what is it going to do is it's going to use the repeat item and break all of those up into new tasks and put them in the inbox and things. Again, you could break that up and put that into a different, um, whole different task management or notes app if you want, but you can see all the stuff is right here. We have the stuff for the kids. We have the overnight stuff for me. We have all the camera gear. I use this um, battery emoji to symbolize, hey, these are things that need to be charged ahead of time. So that way, when I'm kind of looking at this list the night before, the day before, whatever, I can be like, boom, that needs to be charged up. That is something that's really important. New calendar event is a lot like the new task one. This is just for quickly inputting a new calendar event. This takes advantage of the natural language input in Fantastical, so it does require Fantastical to work. Um, but all you do is when you run this, you can just type in your event using natural language. So we can just say, get lunch with dad at noon tomorrow, and it'll just create that event. There you go, right there. Kind of a really cool, easy, simple shortcut. Not every shortcut needs to be 60 actions long in order to be useful. Quick Draft is one of those shortcuts that I made that I'm just really proud of the way it turned out. 
It is meant to replicate the behavior of Quick Note on iPadOS. Quick Note is one of those really cool features that was added, but it just works with the Notes app. And I use drafts for all my note taking and um, you know, just writing out and linking to things. That's the app that I do all of that kind of stuff in. So I wanted to be able to take the behavior that Quick Note has and turn it into a shortcut for drafts. This is one of those shortcuts I run from my doc quite a bit. So let me show you how it works. So when you have like a web page open with a link and all that stuff, and you want to, you know, write a note about it and save this for later. I just trigger this from my doc and select this option, attach link. Now you may see this bug right here where it replicates the link three times. This is a bug in shortcuts. The end result won't have this, so don't worry about it. It's just for the preview. What you can do is if you want to attach the link to a draft, you can select attach link. But if you just want to write a note, you can select don't attach. But for this example, I'm going to go ahead and pick attach link. And I'm going to say wireless CarPlay stereo for my car. Go ahead and hit done. And then what we could do is we can come into drafts here and select wireless CarPlay stereo for my car. And so it has the link, it has my note about it. Pretty cool, pretty handy. I really like the way this turned out. Quick Draft has just been one of those shortcuts that's been incredibly helpful to me, uh, especially for creating notes anywhere in the OS. There's a reason why it's in the dock. I just use it a lot. Um, it uses regex to match text, so that way it can format it and create these markdown links. And if there isn't anything that it can link to, by the way, it skips that whole menu option and just gives you an option to create text and then it adds it to drafts. If you don't wanna use drafts, you can easily swap out this action for any other notes app. My friend Tim Nahumic gave me the idea to use the text replacement option to create shortcuts for running shortcuts from Spotlight. So like QD for quick draft, so I can swipe down here, type in QD and hit space and it'll autofill quick draft so I can just run it from Spotlight. This is really handy when you're hooked up to a hardware keyboard and can use command space anywhere in the OS. Generate link to draft is one of those really handy shortcuts for getting a specific URL to open a draft so you can put it in any other application and kind of really just make those two things connected. So let's just run this right here. And we're gonna type in shortcut. And it should bring back, yep. So we're gonna go ahead and get the link to the uh, script for this video. We're gonna open up things here. This is the notes field in things. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it. So right there, it puts a markdown link to that particular draft and uh, things now supports markdown. So I could just tap that right there and it opens right to that script. Pretty handy if you are doing a bunch of different things and a bunch of different apps, but they are all connected in some way. This video is sponsored by Truebill. Truebill is an all-in-one finance app. Their mission is to improve the financial health of everyday people. It accomplishes this by giving you a layout of all of your finances in one place. Truebill will lay out all of your subscriptions and show the cost. This way you can determine what is worth keeping and what isn't. This is also handy for tracking down any subscriptions you've forgotten about and aren't using. It will also look at any bills you have and make recommendations on how to lower your costs. And you could take it a step further by setting up smart savings accounts that automatically deposit money into them. You can withdraw that money at any time. A couple of things that I really like about Truebill is it uses the same encryption as banks. They don't store any of your banking credentials on their servers. Truebill is an excellent way to see the state of your finances so you can make adjustments to your spending. Check out my link in the description below to check out Truebill. My thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. Watch Launcher is a really specific shortcut um, that is kind of a jack of all trades shortcut. It, right now, it's pretty basic in that it supports creating a new note and creating a new task. But what I like about this is on my Apple Watch here, you can kind of see like, I have, it's full of complications, but this one right here will just trigger this watch launcher and I can select run and it'll just give me the ability to create a new note or a new task pretty quickly. Um, it's really handy to have. It's one of those things that evolves over time quite a bit so that I can kind of swap these actions out with different things or add more to this menu. Um, but this right here is kind of the basic bones of it. 
And I find it to be really helpful when I'm on the go and I just wanna add something to drafts or if I wanna add something to things really quickly. My time machine shortcut is doing something I really want iPadOS to do and that's to have full file and folder backups. But in the meantime, I'm going to use the new files actions in here in order to back up really important folders. So this one in particular backs up the user media folder for LumaFusion. This is where video projects that I'm editing in LumaFusion get backed up. So it'll get the contents of that folder. It'll make a zip file from that. It'll rename it. And then it's going to back it up to a folder on an external drive. Now I don't have that external drive currently plugged in. I can't run it, but uh, it backs it up to that folder there. Now I have that folder mounted on my desk so I can just run this anytime on my desk. I tried to turn this into a timed automation and it's such a big folder that it would crash. It definitely runs better when I can just manually run it. So a lot of times when I go and eat lunch or something like that, that's when I run this and just let it back up to that external drive. Obviously not everyone is a video editor, but if you have a local folder or a folder in particular that you wanna make sure is getting backed up to an external drive, you can just swap out that folder for you know anything else uh, in the files app. This one I talked a little bit about in my iPadOS 15 walkthrough video, but this is a really handy shortcut if you're doing trips or traveling and you wanna build photo albums for every single one of those trips, but you don't wanna go into the Photos app and manually select every file. This uses the new Photos actions to create photo albums and finds photos between a particular date range. So let's go ahead and run this. So. By default, I can pick a range of dates to kind of go between, but I did a day trip up to Yosemite uh, two Sundays ago, and it was just a day trip. It wasn't a range, so I wouldn't be able to use this. So I can switch is in between to is on, and have it set to the 17th, select done here. It's gonna get all the photos from that day when I was in Yosemite. You can kind of see them here. Okay. Yep, this looks right. So I'm gonna go ahead and select done. And I'm gonna say October 2021 Yosemite day trip. And it builds a photo album out of that. Pretty handy. This is another shortcut that's really specific to me. So I don't think it'll be interesting if I share it. I'll, I'll put it in there if you wanna play with it. Uh, but I wanted to, point it out because I think it's interesting um, for people to know about. I use shortcuts to put my devices in a very specific state. So this is for filming, specifically filming B-roll, but my filming mode. So this turns my office lights on, sets my audio playback to be my radio station and Apple Music, sets the playback destination to be the home pods in my office, and then sets the brightness of my device to 60%. Now this kind of just gets my device ready and puts my whole office in a state that I, I'm in when I film B-roll. So that way everything is consistent when I'm filming. It's more about just kind of having noise and all the lights on, but also having that device brightness at 60%. So I know it's always set at the same brightness uh, so I don't mess up any of the settings. Just kind of handy to know that you can use shortcuts to put your devices in specific states if you're doing different things and you need like certain things to happen like do not disturb or uh, you know device brightness or you know uh, volumes or whatever. Drop the needle is for playing music throughout my house via HomePods. Now this is one I can't share unfortunately because of the way the HomePod actions work and like the way they are specifically named. You have to pick your HomePods and stuff for that. Um, but all you need is this control home action, tap on it, drag it to the editor, whatever you want. Once you have it, you'll see this right here. We're gonna tap on that. And then we're gonna select office pods and kitchen pods. Those are my HomePod pairs right there. We're gonna go ahead and pick next. If you have more HomePod pairs, select as many as you want. Again, the goal of this is to play music throughout the house. Select next, we're gonna leave these on play. And then in audio, we're gonna select play audio. And then we're gonna select this choose audio option right here. I'm gonna select radio. You can pick whatever you want, but I'm just gonna select the radio station Apple Music generates for me. We'll hit back. So now when we use this, it's gonna hit play. We're gonna hit done and it'll play music throughout the house. So a lot of times when I get home or when I'm cleaning or whatever, I will say the Siri trigger phrase. I will say drop the needle, like you can see right up here and it'll just start playing music throughout the house. 
incredibly handy, probably one of the most used shortcuts that's not a productivity shortcut for me. Okay, so the last two I wanna talk about are these two health shortcuts right here. The first one is caffeine tracker. Uh, I was drinking too much caffeine there for a little while, so I was tracking how much it, I was drinking and uh, logging it. So you can see here, I had different deals. I had a 12 ounce Diet Coke can, I had coffee, I had a small Red Bull, and then it would log it into the health app. Kind of a nice way to make sure you're not over drinking caffeine. Again, this uses a dictionary, so you can just add whatever you want or modify whatever you want if you're drinking tea or a different kind of soda or a different kind of energy drink or something like that. Um, pretty handy if you're trying to like limit your caffeine intake. Then the other one is blood glucose log. If you're diabetic like me, uh, you can use this to log your blood glucose. Now my meter uh, I, does that for me automatically, but I really hate the graph. I really hate the way it, I can read it back. I just find the health app to be a lot better. So after I measure my blood glucose, I run this shortcut so I can put all of that information in here. Uh, it automatically pulls the date, asks me for the meal, what, my, what the value was, things like that. So these two are incredibly handy shortcuts. If you have other health concerns, take a look at the health actions in there. Um, I'm sure there's a lot you could do with shortcuts and health stuff, um, especially for graphing any kind of you know metrics and stuff like that. Pretty, pretty handy. My thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. If you like it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.